Work Solutions to the Foundation Paper, Multiple Choice, March 2010. So first question, we've got 3,246 people at a football match. We need to round this to the nearest 100. So my rounded line it would go in after the two. Looking at the next number along, is it five or more? No, it isn't. So it's 3,200. Question two. Connor's going to write down um, the numbers in order of size. He writes down the smallest number first. Which is the next number he should write down? So the smallest number is 18. The next number along would be 34. So with this one, really important, you read the question carefully. Okay, it's not asking for the smallest, it's asking for the next one. Question three, we've got sequence here, pattern made of sticks. I want to know what the number of sticks is for pattern number four. So here we can recognise that we are adding five each time. So our next number in the sequence would be 22. Here I have a shape drawn on a grid of squares. I want to know what the mathematical name of this shape is. This shape is a kite. Question five, we're looking at multiplying integers. So here we can do our napius. Now, if you wish to do column method or grid method, that's absolutely fine as well. So four multiplied by seven to give us 28. 2 multiplied by 7, 14. So we end up with 168, which is A. A bottle of orange juice costs 49 pence. What is the best estimate for the total cost of 36? Now here, remember, we are estimating. We should be rounding to one significant figure. So what we can look at is 49 pence. We can estimate that, round that to 50p. And 36, I would round that to 40. Okay, so we're looking at our 50p multiplied by 40 to give me £20. Question 7, we're looking at coordinates. Okay, which one of the points has the coordinate 2 minus 3? So along the corridor 2, down 3, it is point P. Which number is a factor of 15? So here we're looking at our pairs that will multiply to make 15. So we've got 1 multiplied by 15 and 3 multiplied by 5. So it's going to be 3, which is the factor. Question 9. We've got a rectangle on a centimetre grid. We want to know the perimeter. So remember, the perimeter is the distance around the outside. When you've got something drawn on a centimetre grid, the best thing to do is draw little lines so you know which ones you've counted. So here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's going to be 16 centimetres. Next question, we're subtracting some decimals here. Don't forget to do a bit of working out. So we're going to line up our decimals correctly within their place value. Popping in zero there as a placeholder. So zero take away seven, can't do it. So we're going to borrow. 10 take away seven is three. Four take away three, one. Six take away three, three. So we have 3.13. Question 11. One of the statements about the rectangle is not true. Which one? So the opposite sides are parallel. Yep, we've got two pairs of parallel lines here. So that's correct. Um, the diagonals are the same length. Yes, that would be correct as well. All four angles are 90. Yes. That's true about a rectangle. Um, opposite sides are equal. 
yes and the diagonals cross at right angles that is not true so that's going to be e okay when changed into a decimal one of these fractions gives a recurring decimal which one that is going to be our one third as that is our 0.3 recurring first three numbers in a sequence are 1, 3, 7. To find the next number, we're multiplying the last number by 2 and then adding 1. So we want to know the next number in the sequence. So we're going to do our 7 multiplied by 2 and then add on 1. So 7 multiplied by 2 is 14. Add the 1 to give us 15, which is C. OK, money question now. So we've got sandwiches costing £1.49. Drinks cost 72 pence each. What's the cost of one sandwich and two drinks? So 149, add our 72, add our 72. So we've got our 11, 13, 14, 18, 19. And we end up with £2.93, which is D. Question 15, converting our metric units. So how many centimetres are there in 25 metres? So we've got to remember that 1 metre is 100 centimetres. So if I've got 25 metres, that means I've got 2,500 centimetres. Question 16. We've got some coordinates and we're told that they are three vertices of a parallelogram. We need to find the final coordinate for the fourth vertex. So if we look here in our parallelogram, we've got two pairs of parallel lines. So here is QR, so that means that QS must be parallel, S must be here, so that is the coordinate 3, 5, which is B. Question 17, we've got a fuel tank there. Roger's going to fill the fuel tank completely. How much more fuel does he need? So here we're looking at what is this distance on the scale. So here we've definitely got one gallon, two gallons. We've got 2.8 gallons. Area of the triangle. So remember, this is a formula that you will need to remember of base times height divided by 2. Remember that height has to be the perpendicular height. Okay, so we cannot have that slant height there. So we're doing our 3 multiplied by 4 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 to give me 6 centimetres squared. Okay, question 19, midpoint of a line. We've got our two coordinates. So for this one, we're adding our two x coordinates and dividing by two and then adding the two y coordinates and dividing by two. So we've got our three plus six over two and our five plus nine over two. So three plus six is nine, half of nine is 4.5. And then 5 plus 9 is 14, half of 14 is 7. So 4.57, which is E. Okay, forming expressions now. So Sam buys X amount of pencils at 12 pence and Y amount of pencils at 20 pence. What is an expression for the total cost? So we have 12X plus 20y. So 12x plus 20y is e. Question 21, another sequence. So we've got 1, 4, 9, 16. We should recognise these as our square numbers. So we've got 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. Next one along is going to be our 5 squared which is 25. 
Okay, we've got a mixed number here. We want to change that into an improper fraction. So in order to do this, we need to do our 2 multiplied by 4 and then add on our 3. And then that's all going to be over the same denominator of 4. So 2 multiplied by 4 is 8 plus the 3 gives us 11 over 4. Got another sequence here, arithmetic sequence, same as a linear sequence, so it just goes up by the same amount each time. We're looking at what is our sequence going up in? We're adding 10 each time, so we're going to start off with 10n. But do I start with the number 10? No, how do I go from 10 to minus 3? Well, I am subtracting 13, so we have 10n minus 13. We're dividing decimals this time. So in order to do this, I would multiply each of those numbers by 10. So then we're not actually dealing with any decimals. We end up with 64 divided by 2, which gives us 32. D. And then finally, question 25, we're looking at the area of this shape. So this is a compound shape, so what we need to do is split it up into two rectangles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split my rectangle, my two rectangles here. I'm going to label this one A, this one B. So to find the area of A, I need to do our 9 multiplied by 8, which is 72. For this one here, first of all, I need to work out what this length is. So if all that is 10 and this one is 8, this distance is 2 metres. So here I've got 5 multiplied by 2 to give me 10. So the overall area, I will need to add those two areas together to give me 82 metres squared, which is C.